Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon Podcast. It's me, Moshe Kasher. And Natasha Legero. And every once in a while, we have a guest on. Um, we've had a lot of, you know, comics and celebs, but every once in a while, we want to kind of help out a fan, a fan of the show, <laughs> right? And we just have, I mean, this was a kind of an experiment for us, but our biggest, the biggest fan of the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Meg Stalter. This feels like a make-a-wish. <laughs> you have to cut that out. <laughs> oh, wait, because you don't want to make fun of them? No, no, you can't. I don't think it's making fun. It feels like a wish came true, right? Yeah, this yeah. is be- it's beautiful, You can leave actually. it in. No, we can cut it out, too. <laughs> You know what we should do is cut it out, but talk about cutting it out the entire podcast and nobody That's knows. That's what I do on every podcast. I get so nervous I'm going to say something and there's going to be a sound bite of me. Oh, oh Meg Stalter bad. makes fun of Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah, we won't do that to you. Now, you worked all through the strike, right? You were a scab. <laughs> is that right? I heard you were. No, I heard you were a hardcore scab. Is that correct? I've been on set every day. <laughs> by the way, I heard that the, the strike, I keep, I keep, that's, by the way. That's Bunny Stalter. Uh, oh, we'll cut that out. We'll cut that out. We'll cut that out. No, you we'll can put her out. name in. Bunny Stalter. <laughs> That's actually that a good name. She could be like a go-go dancer. <laughs> Bunny, coming to the stage, Bunny Stalter. That's uh, Meg's dog. Meg's dog who has a human face. We all decide. <laughs> but we thought, we think it's fine, right? I No, it's a, it's a fine face. It's not face. a gross human face. Wait, do you, when you say fine, do you mean like it's okay? Or do you mean like she she's fine? No, I think it she's means I'm aspect. safe, don't you think? Like I'm it safe. won't eat you, eat you at night because it's a hu- part human. I got so scared that we, I got an animal that wasn't fully dog. She does look <laughs> human. So she does look, it is, she is scared. There was a night, like second night, she was really attached. She has imprinted. And I looked at her and I thought, I think we should put her away for a little while. <laughs> like she in might the closet? Be, she might be half like another animal. What do you think she could be? Possum. Well, could a possum and dog have sex and be having a baby? <laughs> you know, I'm going to put your mind at ease here. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So she's dog at least. Wait, yeah. but can a wolf and a dog make a... A make, wolf and a dog can, can have can a... Fuck? Can, they can fuck. And they make a coyote? Actually, Is that wrong? <laughs> what? I know, I can tell you this, a Jew and a dog can fuck. Because I, I just know that from my adolescence. But um, no, a wolf and a dog can mate and have a child and have a, a hybrid, a wolf pup. <laughs> Wait, but can't... It's true though, right? Yeah. I grew up, my best friend growing up had a wolf, a wolf hybrid. Wait, so a coyote is a wolf and a dog? No, a coyote. So. Okay, cut, cut that out, my question. No, no I already thought so too. And for my make a wish, I would like to meet a combination of wolf and dog. And they bring a coyote a to a coy- child. What is a coyote then? Just a different kind of dog? It's they prob- are part dog. They probably all have the same um, uh, genetic ancestor. Probably they all come from wolves, right? Fox, mm. fox, dog. Jackal, hyena, these are all dog dog genus. You're tuned into anthropology talk <laughs> and uh, anti and anti WGA talk. I do think I'm giving nervous energy because I am a big fan of the podcast, and I already can tell you're going to put up a clip, and someone's going to go, "Oh, I love Meg. She seems nervous." <laughs> <laughs> How much do you read? Like, do, do comments do you, bother you? Oh yeah, do, do you, you read comments? Um, so I think on my page I do because I want to delete if there's something uh-huh. mean. You know that's a coward's move, and you should, yeah. <laughs> no, it's no, not. I want to delete. You, Sometimes I'll delete just for a joke I don't like. <laughs> if someone yeah, makes yeah, a yeah, joke, I, I'm I like, mm, I don't want that on my page. No, no, thanks. People's and I people's like joke it. tone. Curate it. People, non comedians' joke tone is like <laughs> so often just mm-hmm. an insult, and it's like you just you didn't ever learn how to like make a joke. It's, you can't just be mean and right. say like that that that's the joke. I think people think that since we're comedians, they're a comedian too, and they're right. going to give it to you, and they're yeah. gonna, it's like a roast or something. I don't know. I, I get a lot of that, like mean comments. This is so weird, and maybe I'll just say the story because if the girl hears it, then I'll like I want her to know how I feel. But I, there, a friend of a friend, I ran into the other day, and I barely know her. And I walk by her with my friend that knows her. And she goes, oh, great. You guys are here. Guess I have to kill myself. Wait, guess I, guess I, have to go I gotta kill go myself? kill myself. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, that's not really an inside joke that I thought we had. I've only met her one time. <laughs> I walk away and I'm like, that was weird. Why'd your friend say that? <laughs> that is so funny. Do you think it, she was nervous or yes. something? Yes. I think she wanted, she like... I, she knows me as a comedian that's a friend of her friends. And I think she thinks that I th- would think that was funny. And she's seen my show before. 
And she's a lovely girl. That is so funny. I didn't think she wanted to kill, shoot herself in the head whenever she <laughs> runs into me. It goes from zero to 20 <laughs> so know. quick. It's like, oh, great. Look, Natasha's here. Guess I'll go exterminate an entire nation's ethnic population. Like, like it's hmm, so- high would have been nice. <laughs> Let's do high. I've said to people in interactions like that, rarely, but I've said like, I don't, I don't really know you like that. Oh, that's good. I just kind of like went, that's so hmm. confrontational, Moshe. Well, I, I don't think I would do it now, <laughs> but 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 when someone starts off an interaction with an insult, it, I, I'm like, we're not friends like that. We don't. I don't. We have to establish some camaraderie before you can insult me or threaten your own life. Maybe I could have done a joke about it, like that's that was really intense. Yeah, I would, would ignore mm-hmm. and just ignore them the next time. I, I would saw. hand them a noose <laughs> and say, "Prove it." <laughs> Let's see you do it. <laughs> Take it to the hill. You would really say, though, if someone said that, you were like, hmm, I don't really know you that well. Have a nice day. If I felt like genuinely kind of a little hurt by it, yeah. I might. That's very confrontational, but I might say, I might, I probably would have said something like, wow, that's, uh, oh, nice to meet you. Or right, something that like that. That was the, intense. Yeah. 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 I, nice I might to have, see you too. Yeah. Nice to see you too. Yeah. I, but I also relate to that person feeling <laughs> so nervous around you that they're like, she's comedy. Here's comedy. And just not having any skill set to be able to do it. So you think she wanted me to be like, whoa, good one. Yes, I do. (laughs) Start tickling her. (laughs) Well, you know how like everyone, like people have jokes that like, you know, everyone calls their kids assholes or everyone says I'm dead inside. It's like, I think everyone, like she just thinks like, oh, I'm going to go kill myself. Like it's like a joke or a trope or something. Wait, the part I forgot is that three of her other friends did it to me too. And I didn't know them at all. Wait, same exact joke? Yeah. They they were like, okay. What was it? Kill myself or was it? Yeah, they all were like, "Oh, gotta get a like." It was really weird. But wait, was, it, they all referenced suicide. <laughs> yes. They all started doing what she was doing, and we just kind of walked away. She was like, I "Guess I got to kill myself," and everyone around her went, "Oh yeah, I guess we do." You could have said, um, <laughs> "You could have said like, oh my my first boyfriend killed himself." Oh, you know that could have been nice, like. Like don't it's not confrontational. It's more like oh yeah, making it sad. Yeah, I had a sibling that died like that, so that's not. Oh a, that's, god, I don't like to call that energy <laughs> into the universe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I can understand but that. But I get what you're saying is make it sad and then they feel bad. Yeah, that kind of a thing. Well, not to take it off suicide, but no, let's uh, stay. Meg, you are one of the funniest people I've ever met. I... So, so funny, I would say honestly, it makes me want to <laughs> fucking die. Like I want to fucking slit just... my wrists, go and take a hot bath, and just end my life and not exist anymore. If you don't follow me. Meg on Instagram. That's so nice. You two are the funniest. You know that. Oh, thank you. Not as funny as you. And your Instagram is so funny. And we actually have this thing. Um, I wanted to look up a few TikTok challenges and say them and ask if you uh, were <laughs> know what involved. They are. If you know what they are and if you were involved in them. There's a method to our okay. madness. Let me I love t- that. Can I tell you about my TikTok um, couple of weeks? <laughs> sure. Uh, do you know about this? Meg, I wrote a book. The, uh, 11 years ago, I wrote a book called Casher in the rye it was uh i i it was the the probably my favorite thing that i've ever done it was like a confessional memoir about my childhood adolescent problems and i put poured a lot of energy and emotion into it it made me like you uh, yep it is in oh. some ways the reason that i met natasha because she read my book i'll look at kissing. these two <laughs> the dogs are kissing <laughs> anyway my dog's kissing their dog but their dog's kind of inching away well She's kind of thinking, like, I want to kill myself, kind of a thing. <laughs> anyway, 11 years ago, it came out, and, and, and it kind of, you know, set my career, like, but it, it, it was not a bestseller, but it, it kind of set me up as a comedian. Anyway, 11 years later, Mind Bialik does a TikTok. Don't say that it's not a bestseller. Well, no, check this out. I'm about to tell you. Don't say that it didn't sell 80 million copies. Oh, it just wasn't on like the, at the you know, I was a new comedian. I got lucky to sell the book. But and it still kind of, sold really amazing. It sold well, but wait, check this out. 11 years later, I'm, lit- I'm literally in the mud at Burning Man and somebody sends me a, a TikTok that Mayim Bialik uh, <gasps> did, like books I like, wish I could read again. And she she was like, oh, this book. Anyway, for the since for the last month, my book has been uh, 11 years after publication a bestseller and is coming out oh and being God, re-released on paperback right now and th- now anything from, neg- one TikTok. from one tiktok anything negative i ever said about um about tiktok or social media i take it back because it completely uh like made this book that was sort of like you know something that i i, I remembered fondly into like a, a relevant new thing again it was it's very exciting 
And the timing's pretty cool because I just wrote another book and it's coming out January 30th. This is why we it. brought you here, Meg. Yeah. Because Moshe wanted to promote his book in front of you. <laughs> well, no. I, the Wait, point this is, is amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Tick, TikTok, I'm, I'm in. I'm in on TikTok. I know. That's point. why we're, we're going to get better at it, honey. Yeah, so what's, what, what do you got in terms of these challenges? Okay. Let me just well, read it. It. it is like TikTok is the way to know about things now. I know. But you, you know, know, I was thinking about this. In the old days uh, of the internet, you would go search for a thing. And you would say, I would like to know how to do a thing. Mm-hmm. And you'd type that thing in and be like, oh, how to weld metal. And then you go to YouTube and you watch it. Now it searches for you. Thing searches you. It goes, oh, you yeah, know what you'd you like to know. that you'd like. Okay, so, so here's the top trending TikTok, uh, what do you call them? Uh, Trends. Yeah, okay. okay. TikTok challenges, right? Challenges. Don't oh, watch she's them. She's chewing on your book. Oh, how, don't you dare. How, often, don't you dare. how much time do you spend on Oh, I got a TikTok? little bunny claw in there. That's so cute. Oh, sorry. Is that, no. Was that from her? No, this is good, actually. I'm trying to gaslight you into thinking it was already there. <laughs> okay, go. What do you got? <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, I, oh, am, I love app? TikTok. Like but more I, than an hour a day? I think I've gotten way better at doing it less, but um, it's easy to sit there for hours and watch. Okay. Did you participate in the choking game <laughs> challenge? <laughs> <laughs> the what? That's the number the one. The choking game. <laughs> no. What I do you think that I is? Don't, I don't know if I did that. What do we I think that it is? It doesn't sound like something I'd do. I don't, I don't like that it's number one. What are we thinking it is? Um, I, I have no idea. Is it the her? choking challenge? The choking game. Oh, where someone chokes you and then you pass out? That's got to be it. Oh is my that, God. That couldn't be. That's got to be it. I feel like it wouldn't be against community guidelines. Right? I, it would or would not. It would. But it probably it could it could go viral before they figured it out, I guess. I did that when I was a kid. Is what that is what it? it is? The blackout challenge. I did that when I was a kid. Did you well, ever that's do that? What, I never did it, but that's what I was thinking of. Have it? you ever done that? No. You hyperventilate and make yourself no. pass out? It's a way to get high without being able to afford drugs, basically. Okay. You did that? I did do that. Yeah. We I was a desperate desperate to get high type of child and I remember waking up with all my friends in a ring around me, laughing at me <gasps> at the Oakland, at the Rockridge Bart, uh, Bart station. So Moshe, this probably is one that you would like the Benadryl challenge. I wonder what that is. Are these real? This, I just Googled it. I just wanted to know. They sound the, dangerous. I know. The fire challenge, the corn cob challenge. Corn cob challenge. I know about it. I did that when I was a kid too. That's you see how many corn cobs you can shove up your own ass. <laughs> That's not true. It's true. Okay, what about the back cracking challenge? <laughs> the back cracking challenge? These all sound like sex. The burning <laughs> pile? I don't know. What's a burning pile? I don't know. You don't have the description of what these things are? No. The, these I sound like sex, mo- sex things you do before and after and during sex. Oh, yeah. I get, you mean like, oh, I gave her the old corn cob challenge? Yeah. <laughs> or, oh, I did the back crack thing before we had sex. Mm. Mm. All right. Well, I just want to say, too, with that woman that said that she wanted to kill herself when she saw me, I'm not mad at her. I know she was trying to be funny. And she is funny. (laughs) It's so funny because you set it up. And I just want her to not be mad if she heard this because I think she's a really sweet girl and I just was confused. You have so much sweetness to you, Meg. (laughs) Where does that come from? Oh, well, you know, I'm from Ohio. Oh, that'll help. Oh, of course. And and I'm a God girl. Oh, you current day? Current day God girl? Um, I don't go to church, but if I had a cool gay church, I would go to it and I'm sure there is one. Um, but I love God. Oh, you're just, you're Christian. <laughs> well, I think I'm... Um, I'm not saying that as an it's accusation. Like I, I would say that I'm like, oh, I love and believe in God, but also think people should get head. Get hit? Get, get head. Oh, get head. <laughs> and get like, head. it's cool. It's cool. like God loves that I'm Getting bisexual. Head. You believe in a liberal, <laughs> like a... By yeah. God. The by God. Is there even a liberal Christian? Yeah. I, oh, I'm sure there's churches that I would love. I just, it takes time to find... You know what I mean? And I always get nervous to go to church alone because it feels like something bad. Like people act sometimes like, oh, you lost like a bunch of, like you're here alone. Like it, <laughs> like it feels like I went to church alone before and it felt like everyone's kind of like trying to comfort me. Like the Steve Yen um, scene in uh, Beef where he's just like <laughs> weeping because of the, the childhood memories that it's bringing up kind of a thing. There's something about going without a friend. I mean, it's cool to go to places alone. If I have had a church that I knew was cool, I could go alone. There's something about walking into church without a friend or your family that feels like you're really going through something. No, and I hear that. People are like looking at you in a different way. I would feel that way too. You know what I mean? Um, Did you find, we don't have to continue <laughs> talking about church, but I am curious. Did you find like chill by God um, church in Ohio or was that is that is that uh, uh, 
development of your con- conception of God something that started when you kind of left? Well, you know, when I was in Ohio, I didn't know that I was like bi or into women, which doesn't, I mean, now looking back, it's like, well, of course, but I think since I always knew I liked boys, it was like, okay, I'm not even thinking about it. And then now I'm like, oh, how did I not know I like women more? Um, but I, at the time, I don't, I don't think that my p- church would have been like so cool about it, but I guess I don't know for sure because we ne- it never got brought up. Do you know now if they would? I, I think that they would be definitely not. Bunny oh is no, not. is she on the court again? Well, God. we just got sincere and Bunny's not into sincerity. <laughs> She's like, She's mm, like guys. let's get back to the bits. <laughs> let's talk about <laughs> suicide bits. <laughs> I think they definitely are not like, they're definitely not like, come on in. Really? But I don't think that they're like, come on in bisexual. <laughs> that would I don't a- think why they're do like, they care. I know. Why do they care? I've never felt like God cared. Christianity God needs I mean, a makeover. Yeah, I think it's the people that care. It's just like why. It's like so. It's actually we like weird. It's so interesting that you say that you're a God girl because now I'm like, oh, that makes sense because the Christians that I know are just like they have like this light and they're just oh, are- Christians <laughs> are the friendliest so, people. I mean, it's but not-, not fake friendly. Like it's like they no. have like yeah. a joy of life, and I you always find I can tell when someone's Christian and well. I didn't think you. Well, were. I always love the. Well, all I believe in, I love God, and we're supposed to take care of each other and love each other, and that like, and it's like, <laughs> it's so awkward when you're really opening up and your dog's barking and trying to kiss Blanche. She's just so happy. Bunny's so, so happy to be here. That's so interesting, though, that you have this development. <laughs> she does have a human face. She f- for sure does, and and honestly, God, um, God made man in His own image, and so in that <laughs> way, Bunny has the face of God. And I a mean, God that loves by people. She's giving her a cord she can chew. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. It's pl- plug it in though, Laura. Plug it in. <laughs> no, like why is she bar- She's she like, she's a go- goes. Oh, this is heaven. There's so many cords for me to chew on. I love it. Did you know when you were um like just a, a young Ohioan going to church that you wanted to be like an entertainer? I've always wanted to be an actor. Just straight up. I do I theater always and stuff wanted to be on stage. I was really. Will obsessed. you talk about? I know you've told me before. Um, about like when you grew up, didn't you and your brother like always make videos? Like you just kind of, cause like there's such a joy when you make it. Like for me, everything seems like a chore on <laughs> online, you know, but you just like, it just kind of seems to. She's not allowed on that court, is she? <laughs> Bunny. Look at how hey, well behaved my, our dog is though. Lay Isn't down. that kind of interesting to watch? Like she just hasn't barked, hasn't chewed on a single cord. I know, cord. that's, that's how Izzy was. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> my dog that's passed, that's how she was. She was just sitting and nice. Do you Bunny think gods have a, an immortal soul? Could say that again. Do you think dogs have an immortal soul? Oh, dogs! Did I say gods? I might have. I but thought you, you said God. I, and have, I said, I might does well God have. have an immortal? No, but do you think the dog's energy lives on in the in the way that like a soul would? I think I believe in everything. Like I believe in heaven, ghosts. You're a ghost um, person. Yeah. That's where I leave you. <laughs> <laughs> Moshe doesn't believe in ghosts. He doesn't believe in astrology. He doesn't believe in. But you um, do. You do love God. Past You're a God lives. Girl. I'm not, am I a God girl? I'm an. I'm a. I would call myself a classic Ohio God girl. Uh, wait, so I am curious, uh, not to jump around, but I am mm. curious because you've, th- these big developments in your life are like, yeah, your comedy thing and your your performance thing, you've always known that. But then you had your God girl phase and mm-hmm. now like you, here you are in LA and, and in, in New York is like exploring your sexuality, discovering your bi, all this stuff. Why do you <laughs> think you're you- you're going to say discovering your body. <laughs> discovering your body, putting cord cobs <laughs> in it, doing the Benadryl <laughs> challenge, things like that. Why do you think mm. you haven't found- cause, I mean, we're in LA. There's, mm-hmm. I guarantee, there's more than a hundred like queer churches here. Yeah. What What do you think? Is it just that you don't know anybody to, to go with? Well, that's a really good question. I know people that love God. I don't know anyone that goes to church here. Mm. Church is annoying. They always you know have what a, I mean? a bad rock band, probably at the type of church. <laughs> probably you want. not the one here that <laughs> is the one that would appeal to you. There's probably like I would love to find a church. I think it's really important and good to have that community. Like we go to a temple and it's like yeah. it's the temple version of the church you yeah. want. It's like super queer and like, you know, there's a there's a trans rabbinic intern and it's mm-hmm. just like and I'm just like Oh, LA has that. And, yeah. And so, yeah, that's interesting. I, it, it, I, I, I wonder what that journey will be like for you to find that. that well, if you have any suggestions. Yeah. Write them in. Write them let in. Let us know. Actually, we're here to give you advice. You need to get, <laughs> you need to get that God consciousness back in your life. Let's bring Pete Holmes out. He's standing right there. He's crouched <laughs> down beneath the bush. 
Well, it's also interesting because I grew up in a Pentecostal church. No shit. Is that where they talk in tongues? Yeah. Did you talk in tongues? Yeah. So do you just kind of... And I know it scares people that haven't grown up with it, but it's way different than people think. Is it improv? It is kind of, yeah. Are you like, I think some people put it on, but Uh, like some people do it like that. They're feeling it. They're really... Did you ever do it? And But then sometimes it really is like a spiritual experience that's like i can't even describe it can i ask you but it is kind of scary if you didn't grow up in it like you, i totally do you think did you ever do it i did yeah and do you think that the people that are having a real ecstatic experience because mm. by the way i totally believe you that the people that that there are people that are really feeling something move through yeah. them. yeah do you think that something is just them having an ecstatic experience or is actually they are channeling a uh, what are they supposed to be channeling? An angel? What the are they? Holy Spirit. Yeah. Do you think that's like a real thing coming out of their mouth or just they're having a an internal like experience? You know, it's really hard that I always think like my belief is like we're not supposed to understand everything mm. and that like, you know, how when people do yoga, they're on a different dimension. Sure. Yeah. Like they're like connecting to something, a higher power. Right. Like I think a lot of religions probably similar, but they're calling it different things or like. I definitely think it's you're connecting to something. I mean, there's a reason why when you meditate, you're supposed to be in a very specific yeah. position. So obviously, position like positioning your body in a certain way can make you more receptive. So I totally agree yeah. with you, and I think that's a really good way to put it. Moshe is like a real. He's like a realist. Like if he doesn't yeah. see it, he doesn't believe it. Um, it's also maybe part of the man's problem. You think it's a male issue? <laughs> <laughs> you think men are the only people that don't believe in ghosts? You think all women believe in ghosts? It is interesting <laughs> to me that you don't believe in ghosts. Why? Okay, we've done this before on this podcast. <laughs> but the, pr- the people have seen them. We've done. I heard seen- a table drag drag across the floor in another room. What Hello? does that mean? You heard a noise? No, no, no. Does, well, the table you know is in a different place. When I went into the room, you don't believe me, though. It's not I that do. I don't believe you. I believe that you heard that and yeah. that, that the table was in a different place. I'm just not with you on the leap that there must have been like Casper. And they're like, do, 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 I'm moving this chair. But you they do don't look like Casper, honey. Mm-hmm. What do they look like? <laughs> well, the ones I have in my old house, people told me that it was like two people different told people. You? Two different people told me it was a man who was mad dressed in the third, like from the 30s. Uh, why are they always yeah. from the 30s? I mean, there's been a that lot is of interesting. And they a- told Duncan, get out of this house, get out of this <gasps> house, get out of this house they told just, duncan to get out of the house what do you think that is maybe I, it was you i know i believe when when i'm it's actually connected to the question i'm asking about to, uh, speaking in tongues yeah. i believe that duncan heard get yeah. out of this house and had that experience do i think that means that there was a dead person's spirit going good out of this house no i, I just don't i don't and but why are they always from the 30s yeah that is they're not a all light a beam of light if mm. i could see do you know how happy i would be if i saw a ghost i would be so i would be I would be so thrilled to come onto this podcast and say, I saw a ghost, I believe now. Would, nothing would make me happier on earth. Because then I would say, oh, now we die, we aren't gone. <laughs> there, we get to haunt places and tell Duncan Trestle to leave. It could be because you're not, like for, okay, speaking in tongues, it's like you are connecting with the Holy Spirit. It's sort of a, like a prayer that only God could hear so, or, or like understand. Or it's like you are, I do believe like you are connecting to a higher power but you have to be open to it. Like it wouldn't just come over you and you feel that and do that without you believing that you could, I guess. And so for ghosts, like if you're not open to it, maybe you won't see them. I've actually prayed not to see them. So there are, there are spirits of dead people, but they only appear to people that already (laughs) believe in them. That's well, I don't think, no, I think some, I think if you're totally closed off to seeing anything, I'm right? open. All right, ghosts. let me ask you this stuff all Go, the time. Ghosts come and get me. But kids are dumb. Oh, God. You, I just pushing that energy off of me. I don't want him to come and get us. No, I do not want to go. Wait. Honey, I don't want to be here late at night. Because <laughs> <laughs> I do not want to see what visits you. You adopted a ghost. <laughs> its name is Bunny, <laughs> and it's got the spirit of a dead man's face in it. She does look like a person. Yes, she does. Wait, I have a question. Moshe, do you believe in affirmations? Do you believe that we're words yeah. you say can oh, make yeah. a difference. Because I, I really believe in that. So I, I why totally do you do. think that that can change? Is, is that magic? That's not magic at all. Energy? It's, you know, I liken affirmations to actually comedy, right? Comedy, uh, you know, and, and 
everything is has an element of if you believe it 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 becomes true mm -hmm. like manifestation if, you if believe in it, that it's not even manifestation so much as like if you're a killer right like you do you you crush on stage right okay. you would you describe yourself as a person that crushes on stage that's the only way you would ever describe yourself correct yeah i feel like i'm a magnetic talent great so if you're a magnetic <laughs> talent no but it's true you think you're a magnetic talent right um, there's you, a little bit of delusion that because I, I first I was bad and then I think the delusion's helpful, right? The, no, it, yes. Thinking I'm a magnetic talent yeah. means the next time you get on stage, you're gonna like go for it a little bit more, mm -hmm. be less um, uh, self conscious, really go for it. They say it, it it's proven that um, that uh, the fastest runners in the world, the difference between like the fastest runners in the world and the second fastest runners in the world is like a tenth of a second, right? Mm -hmm. And they I heard this uh, like there was a study done on on the difference between the fastest and the second fastest and it was all psychological oh, wow. uh, all the fastest people are just like i'm a champion and i can win that's the thing that kind of like pops them over the so that's what affirmation is if you're walking through the world going like i'm a piece of shit nothing ever goes my way nobody likes me i suck i'm ugly then you're going to be diminished in every interaction you're going to have less success in those interactions if you walk through the world like i'm awesome everybody wants me the things are going to go my way then it starts to reinforce itself to me that's not like spiritualism that's like like that's okay. oh yeah totally because then it's like every interaction you have if it's negative you'll be like well that's because i suck and not well that's because that person sucks that's because i suck and then the mm -hmm. next interaction you'll you'll bring even more i suck energy to it and it, it just perpetuates itself something you said just healed me oh i love that <laughs> i think it's interesting because i was telling Moshe because i grew up catholic and judaism they don't have the holy spirit Mm -hmm. And that is this interesting thing in Christianity, the Holy Spirit. And sometimes it's called the Holy Ghost. Yeah. So it's almost like this belief being reinforced at every service of like You have that direct connection. Higher, yeah. yeah. Well, they have a, a version of the Holy Spirit. It's just an attribute of God called the Shekhinah. Mm. And it's like, it is the kind of divine feminine within the thing that Jews have, that Christians... Uh, branched out from is we didn't separate it out into different entities of god right it's all like one thing oh, it's every so there's like god has this shekhinah kind of like femme vibes god's got this like masculine you know l l vibe which is the man the like sort of the mm. man god and it's all kind of contained into one thing the and the christians split it into this into the, this trinity well, I think that finding a church would be good, but I also think that like... I did not know we were going to try to get you to go to church on this podcast. <laughs> well, I was just thinking like, because I learned a while ago, like you can pray in your own words. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really helpful too, because growing up Catholic, it was just all about Hail Mary and saying exactly what they said and it felt so rote. But like, you can just talk to God as yourself. Do right? you guys pray like, pray like that? Do you I pray? do. Yeah. I do. You're a prayer? Yeah. But yeah, I do like throughout the day, like... I think that's really nice. It gets, it helps. I, I pray like away the gay. The and I, I know that's not <laughs> that's something That's why you, you want like. me to go to church. Yeah, <laughs> you hate gay people. <laughs> I started giving you pamphlets of extremely like, conservative like Los Angeles based <laughs> churches. I just think this would help. That's all. Wait. I got scared you guys were going to say something about S. Uh, Scientology. Oh, Scient I thought you meant Satan. <laughs> Who? So what are you more scared of? Scientology, Satan, or ghosts? Oh, that is so, I think, <laughs> wait, well, hmm, I'm not scared of Satan yeah. because God, I'm a God girl. So God's protecting me. God got your back. Um, Scientology, I'll just say I don't go inside and I don't talk about it. Have I ever, <laughs> have I ever told you that I, I, I must have said this on the podcast <laughs> that I once went to the Scientology Center on a date. That I'm a, that I, I did a long time ago. I, I had reservations at a dinner and it was like two hours later than we thought. And it was near the Scientology Center. And I was like, why don't we go in there and take the... Uh, the I've never seen it. So we walk, <gasps> we walk in and we take a tour. And it was... First of all, the interior design scheme is literally if you went to a production designer and were like, make me a... Like, I want like a <gasps> cult headquarters. Could you make it like a cult headquarters? You guys were there as a joke. We were there. Yes. Okay. So I didn't go. Yeah. I did, we were there to like... You've dated other people? In my life, yes, yeah, <laughs> cheater. Yeah, no, it wasn't good. Is um, that the whole story, honey? Because we do have someone waiting on the line. <laughs> okay, no, no, no I, oh, okay, tell it, tell it. I, well, I was just moving us on. <laughs> uh, I didn't... That's a uh, endless honeymoon, yes, ending. No, no. Oh, bunny has something. Oh, it's just a leaf. Okay. 
Anyway, the point is they. I don't know us, how much longer this dog has in her. They showed us around. <laughs> Wait, you guys kissed inside the Scientology? We building? didn't kiss, but we we took a personality test. They were like, "Oh, do you want to take the personality test?" I was like, "Sure." That so they great. have your data. And, no, I, fa- I I'm, <laughs> not, okay, I'm, okay. Dumb, I'm not dumb enough that I give them the real stuff. I give okay, them a fake good. one. I took the test, and then she took the test. Separate rooms, and we came back, and my guy was like, "Oh, here's the here's the line of normal." And you're like way down below the line of normal. And guess what the solution is? It's Scientology. <gasps> and I was like, how, what a funny, what a funny, like, I mean, it's just so obvious as a person that's not looking for answers, like what a, that, that, that's just oh a scam God. to they get just, you to join up. They say up. it to everyone. No, they don't. Because then my <gasps> fucking date walks out of her thing and she says, yeah, they said I was all good. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? Wait, do you feel like you said something to make them want you and not want her then? You actually won because they are like, oh, we're interested in him. Oh, this- we're, we're like, we're, you're good. You don't have to come That's here. Funny you have to I, be pretty lost. I always took it as them seeing her and going, okay, we're not going to be able to get her. She's she's too smart. Really? But maybe we could get this guy. That's That was how I interpreted it, but I like your interpretation. They were like... This guy seems sexy for our group. Well, I was thinking they saw something in you that they wanted. And with her, they're like, we don't want her here. Maybe she had a weird <laughs> hair or something. She had beautiful, God, the most gorgeous, beautiful, luscious hair. She just had He does such- not mean that. <laughs> I think I'm, most, I'm more scared of ghosts then. Because Scientology, I'm not scared of because I'm not a part of it. Satan, God is protecting me. Ghosts, God's protecting me. But also, I don't want to see that. Mm, 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 and mm. so you've had a ghost experience besides <laughs> the table? Anything that could convince Moshe? My mom has seen a lot of stuff. Does Everybody, that interest you? It's always you? somebody's mom. It's always someone <laughs> to remove My brother. From mm. Oh, I know somebody that saw something very scary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Was it you? Mm, no, but I saw a table move once. She That's heard crazy. the table move. Would you go to The Exorcist? The the, the, I was, the upcoming Exorcist film? Is that your vibe? Oh, what I, go, I thought Do you were Do you go to saying. like really scary movies? I like to watch a scary movie as long as I'm with someone. I don't want to go alone. But um, oh, it's like church. You don't want to go by yourself. <laughs> yeah. It'll be sad. Oh, my God. I don't think I'd see that in the theater, though. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm excited for The Exorcist. All right. Let's get, let's okay, get well, it moving. You'd go by yourself, though? I would. I would okay. go to a horror movie by myself. Okay. Well, let's take a call and share some of this God wisdom and positivity. Let's see if we can convert whoever comes up on the line <laughs> to one of our religions. Yay. I'm so excited. Oh, this is gonna be. These people might be here for you. Well, I was wondering if anybody would reach out. (laughs) Well, because we posted it. Look how cute we look. Okay, we are gonna call Kate in San Diego. Kate, let's see. Oh, San Diego, a lot of Christians. Let's see. I will be in San Diego (laughs) soon too. So hopefully, Kate will come see me and Ricky Lindholm performing Mm. in San Diego. At what venue? I don't know. The American Comedy Company. Possibly. I'm gonna be there in December. Look on my Instagram. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay. Are we calling her? Okay. Hi, Kate. Kate, what's your relationship like with the living Christ? <laughs> Kate? You sound Jewish when you try to speak. Wait, in isn't that kind of what it sounds <laughs> no, it like? Don't they kind of do it like, like a hi, vaguely... Sh- God, it does a sound... T- I thought they kind of emulate Hebrewish mm, sounds. Oh, interesting. That's, I never that's thought always of been that. my impression. Can you do like just a th- one second of it? Well, see, the thing is that's interesting is I don't put it on. So okay. when it happened to me, it kind of... It really, I couldn't help it. Okay. But some people do kind of fake it. Kate, can you hear us? But we oh, can't hear can. you. Yeah, now I can. Oh, Kate, great. Thank you. Thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? It's Natasha, Moshe, and Meg Stalter. Hi, Gay. Oh, <laughs> so she's one of Moshe our fans. Moshe doesn't like gay people. <laughs> that so was a big reveal that he happened said he didn't want people to say hi, gay. Yeah, that was like sort of one rule I had when Meg was begging to do the podcast. I said none Sorry. of the none of the guests can say Sorry hi. Sorry about gay. that. I love I love it, but already starting off on a bad note. I apologize. Um, Kate, how can we help you? Um, so my question um, has to do with dealing with someone who is very very close to me, their family who um, has an addiction issue and um, I don't really know how to approach it with them. Um, So I was hoping I could get some, some help on that. Uh, Is is it a, is it um, how close do you, how, how do you like this person? How do you like them? (laughs) How close do you, how do you like them? (laughs) You what? I like them a lot. Okay. Um, No, they're um, just trying to, you know, I don't want to 
say their name or anything like that, just to protect them. Just describe them in a way that we it'll be very clear who you're talking about. And, and what's their address? Their address. <laughs> you don't have to say their name, but just say a lot of identifying features. Gotcha. Um, okay, we, they have green eyes and mm, brown I know, hair. I know who you're talking um, about. Yeah. No, they're, uh, they're like a mentor figure to me. When you say mm. approach them, what do you mean by that? Do you mean how to take care of yourself? Do you mean how to call them out on their addiction? Do you mean, what what, what does approach them mean? So um, this person has um, fallen into some trouble financially um, and is now bankrupt. Don't give them money. And that is due to what I believe is a gambling addiction. Mm -hmm. um, that they don't know that I know about. I got it. And they told me about their legal troubles um, confidentially um, and asked me not to say anything else to anyone else like in our immediate circle. And I don't think that's the right move because mm -hmm. from my own experience, like you need a support network. You need um, people to hold you accountable. And I just see them like spiraling further and further into what they think is this like secret gambling life that they have. Um, and they're not like actually improving their situation. So I don't know if I should break their trust and the promise that I made to them and like tell other people about this who are in our circle, or if I should just let them be an adult, like they've asked me to do. I mean, isn't it true that we can't make someone mm -hmm. stop doing something? Well, that's what, that's what sprung to my mind is you say that you need a support group to keep you accountable, but even more important than that, you need to be willing to be held accountable. Like that willingness is like, without that, it doesn't matter what other people are doing, holding it, it that's immaterial. Uh, you have, they have to actually be willing to change or there's literally nothing you can do except find strategies to kind of take care of yourself mm -hmm. in this situation and protect yourself. Meg, do you have any thoughts here? Well, I have a couple really big thoughts. And my number one, one of my thoughts is, I wonder if you've ever been interested in going to Al-Anon. And I've to follow that up, this is, a, this is a good, a good I would suggest. suggest a book that has changed my life called Codependent No More. Mm. Um, because uh, I've sort of, I know exactly how you feel. And we really cannot force someone to take accountability or... It doesn't matter who you tell it. Nothing will change unless the person wants to. And it's really heartbreaking. But what you have to do is take care of yourself because it's also unfair for you to be in this position for someone to put all of that on you. And what I would say is I'd say, I'm really sorry that you're going through that. You know, you are in my heart. And when you're ready to get help, I can, you know, I suggest going to AA or whatever sort of support groups. Gamblers Anonymous. Gambler, yeah. Was, what is yeah. that? There's an AA for that, There right? is. Gamblers Anonymous. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I would say, because that could really help you. But in the meantime, I would, for you, really focus on what could help you because it's not really fair for you to have to decide who is going to help this person mm -hmm. if they're not helping themselves. That's such a self-compassionate view. It's but it's not just self-compassionate. Because it, Meg's mm. like, how can you take care of yourself in this situation? Yeah. But that's, it's not just, you're right that it is that, but it's not just self-compassionate. It's actually in the situation where a person with addiction isn't willing to change, mm. it's literally the only thing you can do. Mm -hmm. it, there isn't an op, there's not a third option, which is, I mean, in, um, interventions are, are good in order to pull the cover off of the lie part, but they, they don't necessarily, right. it just means that now the information is on the table. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that that person is going to change at all. Interventions don't mm. always work. In fact, I'd say they probably work is a weird term, but they, they don't always work like the person goes, oh, I do have a problem. You're right. I'm going to get better now. But what they do is they stop the this, this sort of veil of secrecy that a lot of addiction uh, requires in order to function. It functions in shadows, much like the demon mm. spirits that I've welcomed into my life on this podcast. <laughs> but like, um, but so I think that... The self -com Do you have a, a, a bird, a pet bird? <laughs> no, I have a child. Oh, you have a child. Oh. Okay. Because it was a pet I bird. I was going to say my first suggestion is get rid of it. But the child, I think you should keep. <laughs> um, and and I think I think going to, yes, gamblers, uh, uh, I'm sure there's a gamblers right. anonymous corollary to, Al to Al-Anon. But if there isn't in, in your Al -Anon town. Al-Anon can still help though. Al-Anon can you're help. Struggling. Uh, yes. It's like people who are adjacent to people with addictions or connected and love people with addictions. And you want to help and save them and 
Yeah. I mean, I, I have a brother who's addicted to alcohol and he's his life is kind of a mess. And, you know, my mom's always begging me to not give him any money, you know, and it's like what she's learned all these years. And it's like, and I don't give him money anymore because I know he immediately is going to spend it on alcohol and I don't want to be the person who he calls to always need help. And it's like, I think also with this, you have to not give them any money. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is people are going to find out. Yeah. And you're just the first person to find out. Keeping secrets for a person with an addiction issue, whatever the addiction is, is like a it's a it's a it's it's a automatic strategy that a lot of addicts have is like, hey, you you take why don't you take some of the burden of this shame that I'm living with and you and let's do shame together. That's a uh, that's a uh uh-uh. <laughs> that's you know, awful. That's a, it's true though. W- what did you get out of I've never read Codependent No More. What what was what were your gems that you took away from it? Um I you know, I think it's a lot about really torturing yourself over like when you grow up with someone that struggles with addiction, you're constantly trying to like make everything okay and you're not really putting your needs first. So I think sometimes I have to be like, wait, am I like, I think it's helped me with boundaries a lot. Like, cause I think that's something that you, that may be helpful is um, you shouldn't feel guilty if you can't give this person, I wouldn't give that person money cause it's not, then it's actually not helping if they're struggling and it's not fair to you to be asked that. So I think codependent no more. <laughs> but let me ask oh, you. No, this. I think that's a really good <laughs> I, suggestion. I think it helps you I have a question. Like, take care of yourself. Is that if she wants to confide though in let's say another relative about mm. this, is that wrong? And is there something proactive she can just say to clean her side of the street to the person? Like, should she say like, I think you need help? Yeah. I, for me, I would have a boundary of saying, listen, like you're putting a lot on me and I, I don't, unless you want to get help, I can't talk about it anymore. Yeah. And mm, I'm not going to keep, good. I, and I'm and, and saying out loud, I'm not going to keep secrets. Yeah. For you. Also, I wouldn't agree to keep the secret. Yeah. It's not fair of you to ask me to keep your secret. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I, but I, if you I, need resources, I'm here to help mm-hmm. and try to right, n- not yeah. help financially, but you know, because the thing that happens with secrets and in addiction a lot is that people put this uh, and it's not their fault. They're struggling with a disease, mm. uh, but it doesn't matter that it's not their fault because the thing they're doing is still harmful. And they say to you, they will use the love that you have for them to, to try to get you to conform to their will. So they say, if you loved me, you wouldn't embarrass me in this way. You would keep mm. the secret. And that's not what love is. Love is not uh, conditional and love is not secret and sick like that. Um, that's disease. That's disease talking. And so, so like telling t- t- her telling you uh, them telling you like whether that you need to keep a secret or you're not engaged in loving behavior is is has nothing to do with your relationship with mm-hmm. that person it has everything to do with their relationship with their own addiction, I would say. Right. I actually didn't know that I was codependent because I thought I was like, I'm so independent, but codependent means you're putting someone's needs before your own and you're really, yeah. And you're kind of like, Oh my God, I'm codependent people pleasing and being like, well, it's more important that they're happy than if, even if it bothers me that they've done this thing. Wait, that's like every mom. (laughs) (laughs) that's true Mm -hmm. that's pretty much my life 24 7 we have found that well maybe with kids though we can't really we have to be there for them because it's what we signed up for but maybe with friends and Mm -hmm. with you know i honestly even think with kids this notion that in order to love them correctly, you have to put their needs above your own. I think that's a false dichotomy. I don't really buy that. Like, yeah, but I want to sleep in. She has to go to bed. She has to go to school by eight ten. Sure. I, you know, it's like her needs are above mine. There are static realities, but the idea that like I don't need to take care of my own self mm. it, because I love this person—that's yeah. not true. Mm-hmm. I think that that's yeah. in any relationship. We have found the name, by the way, of the Al-Anon corollary for gambling addiction, and it sounds a lot like a demon uh it is gammonon 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 i welcome you into my life gammonon take over my that household is scary. come come to my table gammonon take over my spirit dear gammonon and i'm sc- i'm pushing that energy off me because it does sound <laughs> scary is that something I you would be- just like yeah i would definitely be interested in that but i guess what i'm also wondering is like am i enabling the behavior to continue by not telling other people in our circle because they keep putting this person unintentionally in situations that makes their various addictions much worse. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's why you need to say to the person what me- something like what Meg said, you know, I don't feel comfortable keeping this secret 
and you know, I, I'm here for you if you need help, but I, I can't do you. I, I can't be asked to do that. Maybe to keep this. Secret. Yeah. yeah. Cause then, cause then you can, if you feel like you need to tell the other mm. person who's enabling them, you can, you know, and maybe you can even say, and I'm, I mean, you're obviously worried about this person. You just called a podcast. Like it's gotten bad. I know it's true. Yeah. <laughs> are you saying that I'm other people worried. are like giving them money and stuff? No, no, this person is like the life of the party. Um, like if you, if you want free drinks, like this is the person who's going to buy them for you. They're also like compulsive spenders. Mm -hmm. So like when we're in these events with friends and family, like they'll buy a, like they'll buy the whole meal for people when they can't afford to do so. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, they're just constantly like buying things as a form of like, Hey, I want to be liked. But, um, and it's not the other people in our circle's fault because they have no idea what this person is going through. Um, I just happen to be the only one. And um, it's just frustrating because we're constantly in these situations where I see this person just like dig the hole they're in deeper and deeper because they're not holding themselves accountable. I think you're still putting a lot of like responsibility on yourself to fix it and tell mm -hmm. people and be like, well, do I tell everyone or do I tell this person? And it's really you. I think the codependent book will help you know that it's not um, or even like finding support for this, that it's not yeah. your responsibility to know who to tell and how to tell them. If it comes, I would tell them I'm not going to keep the secret. Then if it comes up naturally or if, if it's helpful to you, but it's not your responsibility. And yeah. next time you guys go out to lunch or dinner, or whatever, bring cash yeah. and pay for your, your stuff. You and know what I mean? When, like yeah, just definitely. always make that a habit. And it's like, you, you, Meg's right. You can't control with this whole group. I mean, if you lived with the person, it would be affecting you more because it would be affecting your direct finances. So I think you would have to be a little more involved. I but. say, yeah, next time you guys all go out to eat, wait, do you, do, is this affecting your finances? You're making, you're making faces like maybe it is. Are you actually it experiencing could. consequences <laughs> from this person's it behavior? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think that what you are suffering from right now is a lack of information. Like there's no way, like, even though Meg has all this in, um, experience with codependent no more and it changed your personal book. life I'm acting like i wrote the book. no but i'm saying like that's it significant it's a significant yeah. resource and even though I, it. I spent a long time in recovery and know a lot about I, I feel like i know a lot about like the addictive mind and stuff like that there's no way you were going to get enough sufficient tools on this podcast to go okay i know what the best strategy is for me moving forward that's yeah. why going to something like gammonon or going to a therapist who specializes in uh, mm -hmm. addiction in the family getting like literally collecting a set of tools and information uh, for best practices and then once you have all that information approaching this situation in a way that protects yourself especially now that you're saying that it's possible that their behavior could have implications consequences on you uh you know you've got your you've got a family that you have to worry about like uh, financially you, yeah. and physically and so right now it sounds like and this is classic this is a classic situation that people that have people close to them um, that have addiction issues find themselves in is you love the person so much you find yourself uh, ignorant no offense like not just not knowing what to do and uh, yeah. and heartbroken and you go what the hell do I do there are all these resources in order to collect and I think Meg's right it's probably going to be less satisfying than you think because there isn't probably a resource out there that's going to allow you to save this person that you love there is a resource out there that's going to give you the tools to figure out how to protect yourself so that they don't destroy you in the process of destroying themselves and then you wait around long enough to hope that they get better on their own gotcha so it's kind of a bit of both set the boundary get resources but also let them be an adult and and also it's going to be hard for you to confront them because they might be like i don't have a problem how dare you or whatever you know so it's like that's yeah that's already happened yeah yeah so that's not going to be fun and it's you know maybe you want to do it on the phone because of that or i don't know you know what whatever makes it easier for you i would say go get the tools first your mm -hmm. first order of business mm -hmm. read codependent no more find a therapist who's who's um uh, um competent in, in addiction in the family issues go to an online gammonon meeting if, if you're not comfortable enough to actually go to one in person there's definitely ones on zoom get all this information and yeah you can say i've even i've even sat through one yeah Mm -hmm. One of the meetings, you know, and, yeah. and I'm and I'm considering going to Al-Anon. I'm not an alcoholic. Well, you know, it's like I, I feel like, you know, it's 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 in the proof is in the life. 
You know, if, 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 if your life is like in shambles and your finances are like totally fucked up and you don't know what you're doing and you're confiding in your friends that you're, you fucked up. It's like, yeah, you need help. And a lot right. of it's not feeling guilty if that person comes to you asking for help and not being able to help them because they're not really, you know, if they ask you for money mm-hmm. or something, it's right. like, well, you're not helping yourself in these ways. I can't give you any money right now. It's not sounding like help. It's sounding like you want money to go to the yeah. slots. <laughs> I mean, I would say that would that the first thing I would do before you go get the tools is cut financial ties with this person. Uh, protect yourself like literally immediately because you just don't yeah. know. Even you who are very close to this person have no idea the depths of how bad it might be. And you might turn around one day and go, oh, wow, I just got straight. I mean, you just don't know. When it comes to dealing with addiction, there is an unknown situation where people will hurt you even though they still love you. And I would say protect yourself at all costs. I think that Mm -hmm. is the, yeah, that's how I would approach it. Did we help you at all, Kate? Yeah, you did. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, um, I, I guess, kind of a question that doesn't have like an easy answer. So... Well, I'm but, sorry you're going through this and it's been going on. So I'm, I'm over the sadness part. Now I'm just <laughs> at the frustration part. All right. Well, yeah, the, try to change that baby's diapers. <laughs> and uh, no, there's like a line in the AA book that says when someone has cancer, uh, everybody is sad, but nobody's up, uh, nobody's upset and hurt. Like that's the real heartbreak of addiction is it's a disease that also is expulsive. It's a disease that harms people like shrapnel and it sucks. Like when someone's sick with a disease where it just hurts them, all you feel is sadness and pity. Now you have sadness and pity like they had a regular disease and also betrayal, hurt, fear. You can't trust the person. They might be stealing from you. Resentment because they took your money. All of that. And then you start to feel guilty about your own reaction to their sickness. Oh, if I really love this person, Mm -hmm. then I would just love them for the... Uh, it's just you're you are the person right now that needs to be treated, not your friend or whoever this person is. You're the person that needs to, to treat to needs treatment to figure out how to get better. And then all the other stuff can have an environment to grow. And it probably also feels like you probably feel really guilty, like, mm-hmm. OK, I feel guilty. What if I just gave them a little bit more money or mm-hmm. what if I tell this person, should I tell this? But you shouldn't feel guilty and you need to just take care of your boundaries and yourself because you didn't do anything wrong and it's not your responsibility to fix it. You can do it. But you can start with one thing. You do can it start, at your kid's nap time. But you can start with one thing. Order Codependent No More from Amazon when we get off this Zoom or or go to go to find a look up Google people in San Diego that are therapists that know about uh, addiction or just take one little step because you're right. It's overwhelming. OK, you need to go to Gammonon, get a therapist, buy a book <laughs> and then set some healthy boundaries and call your bank and cut. No, start with one thing. Start with one thing and 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 just take care of yourself. And pray, honey. Oh, that's right. Don't forget to pray. Mm-hmm. Find a queer a friendly church in your local area and take <laughs> Meg to church, please. <laughs> All right. Well, good Trust luck, you. Kate. Thank you. I appreciate it. Wait, Meg, that's so crazy. I, I never knew that codependent was people pleasing. I know. I said somebody told me I was codependent. I said, absolutely, I'm not. And then I'm they, definitely people pleaser. I'm I definitely am a people pleaser. Honey, you don't need to read codependent no more. <laughs> Meg, please, please stop. Please stop. <laughs> you I don't I you might be codependent. Like if you are a people pleaser and you think, okay, like if someone's upset with me, I feel like I'm gonna die. Could would it, like I feel like right. I'd do anything to fix it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm working through that because I shouldn't. If someone's upset, it's like, well, people get upset all the time. Well, the crazy mm-hmm. part, and it's most stark in addiction issues actually, but mm-hmm. it's in general, is that not only does um people pleasing is it that harmful to you, the person that's the people pleaser, yeah. but it it doesn't actually please the people no, usually. Right. It usually it has it's usually not like what you actually want them to be doing. It's it's some other thing that they think is going to make you not hate them. So it mm-hmm. never feels like the thing that right. is pleasant anyway. You don't think like taking care of everyone around you is like kind of in women's women's blood memory, right? Or something? That is a people pleaser pleasing Women. we've been taught to do that yeah like you just kind of take care of mm-hmm. everything and then oh you know here's dinner and let me do the dishes and are you ready for work honey well, let me and just let me say strongly and then take care of let the me kids just say strongly then- that that taking care of things around the house and the kid and stuff like that that is good and healthy and not people pleasing <laughs> behavior that's good <laughs> well do you feel bad if someone's mad at you yes see 
I mm. mean, who doesn't feel bad if someone's mad? But at it's them? like tort. It's like I think with I'll send texts. I'll yeah. try to like figure out how yeah. to like handle it's a little more it. torture. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. All right, I'm gonna check out this book. As or well. say you're late, but you're right because like say I'm late to something and I'm like I'm so sorry. People want to get over it, right? Instead of me apologizing the whole day, I'm so, so God. Yeah. I can't believe I, if I just left and all these excuses and all these apologies, they probably want me to be like, sorry about that. Like, let's order. I, and and they're not pleased. In <laughs> right. fact, yeah, like, they're how, like how annoyed. They're like, no, it was not pleasant. <laughs> she all wouldn't she shut up yeah. about how sorry she was. OK, well, you're familiar with the podcast. Would you like to listen to some secrets? Absolutely. Can't wait to dive in. <laughs> 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 I mean, know, have I said that that I listen to every episode of this podcast? You have told and me that. I know that. it's freaked. I think at first when we met, it freaked you out. No, it didn't. Really? I was impressed. I was it's, glad that you liked flattering. it. It's flattering. We love that. Okay, good. and we're so happy to have you on. <laughs> I'm so happy to be on. <laughs> there was a long pause. There. I know because I I got tangled up we in the cords. Did you see up. that? Oh, and no, I was like, I oh it. wait. <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to leave your dog here for a couple of days. You like her? Foster. Yeah, I want to foster her underbite. She's sweet. I mean, the her running around. Was I love that you have two different dogs in your life, like your like soul dog uh, mm -hmm. that you grew up with, and then this dog is more of like a little bit like a thirsty, clingy person you're dating. <laughs> you're like, yeah, no, they're very nice, but like, <sighs> she's it's like, a lot. It's not perfect. She's my newborn baby. Like she's a, she has imprinted. As soon as she woke up from surgery, once you get them from the pound, they fix them. Oh right. She woke up from surgery. She's been attached ever since. I thought maybe you gave her the underbite. That's what you're referring to in surgery. <laughs> She Ever since her <laughs> mouth surgery. <laughs> when I found Blanche, she was pregnant. You found her outside? Mm -hmm. uh, and she had oh five babies. God. Oh, Blanche. She'd look at me like, that's She's right. And they were all black with a white stripe down the oh. middle of their heads. So. You didn't keep them? No. But I had to keep much. them for eight weeks. Oh, Blanche. Miss all right. B. Let's Miss B <laughs> and Miss S. Let's do some <laughs> secrets. This is a very dumb secret, but... I have been lying about my dog's birthday because I wanted to be closer to my birthday. <laughs> uh, nobody knows, nobody cares, but I want my birthday to be closer to my dog's birthday so we can give presents to her and each other. Thank you. So Meg's maybe like, maybe I don't. <laughs> don't want a dog now i'm thinking how often does that get brought up <laughs> now what's this dog's birthday what's, what's the birthday to the dog oh well, uh, that's close to your birthday i bet you guys give each other gifts <laughs> Wait, like what does anyone know their dog's birthday i remember i found cutie like the first week of january but no, i never remembered no, it. vets do this thing where they send you a card uh, they send you like a postcard saying like it's almost their birthday and they don't know their birthday it's like literally a year since the first time you brought them for a checkup and I remember last year, it was Cutie's birthday. So we decided, oh, it's Cutie's birthday. We should buy her this the, the, oh, at the pet mess. store. They have like a dog cupcake <laughs> and it's got like blue frosting. And we're like, here's it's a cupcake <laughs> for a dog. She ate it. And the whole day, the whole house was covered in neon blue diarrhea <gasps> and vomit. Oh and it was God. it was insane. The amount of, of vomit and diarrhea that could be produced from one dog cupcake. Never again, I would say. I did it for the kid because I was like, oh, it's cute. It's cute to it was, celebrate their birthdays. Yeah. I guess. But um, yeah, that girl, first of all, I just want you to know you can make up your dog's birthday. Yeah. Right? Also, what's the dog giving you for your birthday? She said we give each other gifts. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. She's like, oh, yeah, almost my dog's birthday. <laughs> also, you guys are ignoring an insane synchronicity. We were just talking about dogs. Oh, yeah, that is true. Hmm. Insane. How about that? Oh, about, that is it. <laughs> or epic, Wait, as my five-year-old would say. Hold on, I just had an epiphany. I do believe in ghosts, I think. Now, now that that's You have to believe happened. in magic. I mean, what are the odds? Yeah, no, a ghost must have created that situation. <laughs> there, there's no other explanation. She was too naughty. <laughs> All right, do we have another one? This might be dog-related, too. Hi, Mosh. Hi, Tosh. Okay. So, I work for... Just a very conservative company. I'm very liberal. I can't out myself as an atheist liberal. And I regularly hold hands and pray with my coworkers and pretend that I believe in the magic of Jesus and God and the creators of earth but i'm the atheist and i enjoy us about it but 
I live the lie every day of my life, eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. That's all. Love you guys. Thanks. I think it's nice that she does that. It's almost like service. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like she's making them feel better. All right. No. I, be I believe. I mean, that's a crazy synchronicity. I can't believe we're, we're I'm like, are you making the calls happen after no. you hear what we talk about? It's we it's weird that every person on our podcast today just needs to find a gay friendly church. It's just like every person, <laughs> including your dog. Like, well, it would be wild if she was like, get off of me. They were trying to pray with her and she's like, get off of me now. And she like went out of the room. The woman that's praying at her work. <laughs> You guys looked at me. You didn't know what I was talking about. Oh, I, missed, I missed a small part of it. <laughs> no, she like she's she's doing it to appease them, but it sounds like she's not very happy with it. But it also she probably doesn't know how to be like get off. I don't want to pray. What company makes you pray? That is interesting. Makes you pray. I've never. I mean, I've been around conservative. Mm. They're not often like tugging you yeah. into the prayer room. I, I, I don't know is. if I would say something. I think I would just do it. Well, it's illegal to make people pray at work. Do you think it's just suggested and she feels awkward so she just does it? What if she works for like a hardcore evangelical Christian organization? It that, would be kind of nice to just say like, I'm just going to sit in the back. I'm going to sit this yeah, one she, that, she could say like, I'm going to excuse myself. But there now Maybe. she's... No, see, this, this is a crazy synchronicity. <gasps> Here's the problem with people pleasing mm -hmm. and codependency. She's too far in. She can't do it now. Now she's got to pray with them for the rest of the time she's there. Because if she were to stand up for herself and say, actually, I'm not interested in doing this, now they would go, oh, my God, what's wrong? You used to have this relationship with prayer and God. Mm -hmm. Now you don't. You're in trouble. Whereas if they had just in the very beginning said, oh, I'm good on this, nothing would have happened. Codependent it must no be more. a really religious company, though. You're right that it's interesting that I've never worked somewhere they made us pray Maybe so they it's pray HBO before. they didn't HP we don't do that at HBO Max <laughs> yeah, uh, <this laughs> Max didn't make you pray <laughs> what if she works at a church and she just left that part out? I mean it's like the 700 club she's like they I don't know why they make me pray I just uh, it's a bible study group that I work for I don't my, think God wants to be forced to do things I feel like my mission right now and I don't know why I care is to get it's to find the perfect like like queer friendly awesome church just because i feel like i know it exists here mm -hmm, and i want definitely. you to find it because i feel like <laughs> you're in the mecca of, of where that awesome cool church but I you're also in the mecca of people hating religion being brought into our lives mm -hmm. when we don't want it sure like, sure you know hollywood is very liberal yeah for but for way. all my like concrete materialism it, that i desire out of life i really enjoy the times that I go to this temple because it's like I like mm -hmm. I'm not a big very spiritual person and certainly not like a very mystical person but I like ritual a lot and I think connecting yeah. to community in that way is like really nice and meaningful for me personally we had a really nice new year we had a Rosh Hashanah together it was very sweet I baked challah with my child oh, it was cute I actually think people in LA need God and <laughs> sure. they need I something. actually feel like people in LA like do you want to connect to something spiritual? Like it feels like they're desperate for it. And also Christianity, the umbrella just needs a makeover. Like yeah. there should not be like, That's why do they care who marries who? Like getting right. rid of all of that, like judging other people to be like them. There's so many gay, I know so more outdated. gay people than straight people. God, why would God not Dude, be okay? That's like, your show guys. What? It's religion makeover. It's like bar rescue. <laughs> you go into like a hardcore Christian church and you just kind of zhuzh it up a I little bit. I could see us doing that with <laughs> matching religion. outfits. I could see me and you with matching outfits doing that. Religion makeover. Yeah, it's just like queer eye for the pulpit mm -hmm. or something like that. But you go into like I'm talking, I'm talking hardcore, mm -hmm. hateful churches, and you just she's kinda the girl like, to do it. You just kind of zhuzh it a little bit. Hey, don't try to get out of this. This is me and your yeah, show. You guys, yeah, I'm. I, I mean, You're I'm, like, yeah, that's a great idea for you. Hmm, I'm pretty sure that you were my partner in this. I'm like, I would producer. do anything with you. You are so funny and you are you have such great advice. You got wisdom. Too. Honestly, so Codependent Mo No More was such a good pull because it, you're right. It was like it wasn't I always get weird um weirded out about suggesting and maybe mm. uh, 12 step stuff only because I know it's it doesn't work for everybody and mm. it does have a god component, like a spiritual component. So like the two prong of like something psychological and something like sort of 
sort of more in the spiritual zone is I thought that was a very wise bit of advice. So Well, that's the other thing is you can't really make anyone go to Al-Anon or AA or any of the groups, right? It's more like, oh, this is what I do. Like, you're not really supposed to like... Well, it's a typical question. Yeah. A person calls in, there's somebody in their life with addiction. They say, can you give me advice on how to help them? And it's like, mm. no, but I can give you advice right. on how to help yourself. Right. I went to like two Al-Anon meetings in my life and I swear to God, maybe one. And like, I immediately broke up with the guy I was dating. Oh, wow. Like, like, but it was just for the best. Like it was. Okay, yeah. let's uh, take another call. <laughs> no, I'm just saying it. I just remember it being very powerful because I wasn't oh, going yeah. about him. I was going for oh, interesting. something else, but it just kind of made me like immediately have the strength to like create boundaries I didn't have before. Like, I just feel like those, those meetings wow. can be really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, they are. There is really powerful magic and in, in in that um kind of aikido that you do where you think you're there to help someone else and you you realize that you, you needed to help yourself um all right do we have another call yeah let's take one more okay okay we're gonna call it michaela in nashville hi how are you i'm good how are you we're it's very natasha good. legero moshe kasher and our friend megan bunny stalter hi miss m <laughs> how are you i love the dogs yeah <laughs> We love the dogs, That's too. Awesome. We never want to be uncomfortable and without our dogs. Is this... So. W- where are you right now? I am in my office. I was going to say, this is this is yeah. give, like a strong, like... Um, corporate? Corporate it's wall a vibe. Office. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. I got it. I got it. Cool. Good. Okay. So how can we help you? Are you like on your lunch break or something? No. Um... I'm just kind of stuck here alone. So uh, I figured it was the best quiet space. No judgment on your wall at all. I was just really hoping it wasn't your house because I would have been very concerned (laughs) for you if that was what it looked like. All right. This is looking good. I would be concerned if I lived in this space as well. (laughs) Good. (laughs) Um, Okay. So my issue that I wanted to bring to y'all is how do I get my husband to actively try to turn me on? Oh, this is good. (laughs) <laughs> the background is we've been married for five years. We've been together for 10. Um, we have a great relationship. We really are like best friends. We have a lot of fun together when it comes to sex. I think we have great sex, but he doesn't put a lot of effort into getting me into the mood at no. all. <laughs> um, sometimes he says really stupid things. Sometimes he says things. Can you give us some examples of stupid things <laughs> and off putting things? What kind of things? Um, so I actually wrote a couple of things down, yes, but yes. I think a couple of weeks ago he said something like, can I fondle you? Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> Did he do an accent? Is he British? <laughs> he, he is not British. He occasionally does an accent. Um, another one, a few weeks ago, I was like doing dish, finishing up some dishes and he came up behind me and he goes, would you like to make the sex? Um, oh, like in a Borat so voice? I'm with. Kind of a Borat <laughs> energy kind of a thing. I do like that. He's saying what he, what's on his mind and he's asking what's and on his a, mind. And he's attracted to no, you. The, mm-hmm. the problem is he's, tra- it's synchronicity. Like, <laughs> it's very similar <laughs> to, um, I, oh, Meg's here. I'm going to go kill myself. It really is. <laughs> Because it's it's a it's a it's an anecdote you won't get, Michaela. But it was basically talking about like mm-hmm. when people are so awkward yes. and weird. Yeah, they they're say, nervous. They say some dumbass shit that's just like, yeah. why, why? That's what it sounded like to me. He mm-hmm. doesn't know how to be a sed- a sexy guy. It makes him feel uncomfortable. He's like sexy guy. So instead, he tries to be funny guy, mm-hmm. which is not what you want. Ooh, can we make it the sex? Uh, I mean, nobody's interested. In it that. is probably dry, dry, drying you up. Yeah. <laughs> You're probably feeling, okay, I'm dry as a desert right now. <laughs> but he is. The whole thing I'll give him a point for is he's being direct, going like, okay, I am I want to. Do you want to? The he, what he, you want him to say is something sexier or like more hot. I I just want him to try to get me in the mood before mm-hmm. we're actively having sex. Yeah. Because right Sometimes now. Sometimes when he says these things, mm-hmm. it does the opposite. Right. <laughs> um, my headphones just went dead. Hello? Hello? Oh, oh yeah. Did, oh, oh, it is Bunny. Oh, God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, she's like... Mm. Um, yeah, I was going to say right now she's drier than the design scheme at the <laughs> law office she works at. <laughs> that, that, that felt pretty good. Well, I mean, you could experiment with like, think of what your dream scenario is and try to do it to him. You know, like you probably would have liked him to come up to you while you're doing the dishes and kiss your neck. Exactly. And maybe like lightly touch your leg. Yeah. Or- what else would she have liked, Natasha? 
Like what other things? <laughs> Him to help with the dishes? Oh, no, <laughs> no, that's your fantasy. Um, yeah. <laughs> did you tell? Did you tell him yet? Like, oh, that doesn't really get me in the mood yet. I have. I have said that very directly. I think it is that problem of he doesn't know how to be sexy. He just knows how to be funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. What about telling him that you don't really want to make jokes? Like you like to separate the sex life. Mm. I, I think that's actually good. I think you know where I heard this. This is so lame, but I think I heard Ice T and Coco talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> that like when they have sex, it's like not <laughs> jokes. Like you don't joke around. Like and they and when I saw them together, they had like such attraction, and it's like <laughs> you could tell these people like really mm -hmm. keep this separate, and their sex life is probably like hot and heavy, but like you know, it keep, I don't know how you would say it, but I and then I actually stopped. Kind of, I don't really make jokes in bed, Moshe. Uh, no, you do not. No, because I kind of felt like, oh, I, I was kind of inspired by them in a way because, but it, I, I changed. And I don't right. know. It's because it's she like, used to do Natasha's thing when we first started dating. <laughs> she had these Groucho Marx glasses, and no, she would. But I'm just saying. She would say she would like put them up, and she had a cigar and stuff, and she'd be like, "And no club that would allow me in would I ever want to be a member of." I'm and just saying it's kind of a cool idea to separate those two mm -hmm. parts of you. Like I'm funny all day long. Like what about like my sensual side or my sec my sexual side? They're not really connected to the other. Right. Yeah, that's a really good point because we make jokes constantly he's he is very funny but but maybe not during intercourse he probably it sounds like he doesn't really know how to initiate or maybe he, it doesn't come as natural i think it'd be a good idea if you made telling him maybe a part of the s sex where you're like you know it'd be really hot if you came over mm -hmm. and you did this to me or and like wow like you know what i was thinking about today like you coming in and doing you know, and then saying maybe something that would be more hot than a joke. And mm -hmm. then maybe like that would turn him on. And then maybe next time he does that. And, yeah. and also maybe what if there's like him being quiet? If, if the choice is a joke, <laughs> well, if the choice mm -hmm. is a joke or silence, mm -hmm. silence is way preferred. And he's probably mm -hmm. too nervous to be like, uh, you know, say something serious to you because you're his best friend and you guys mm -hmm. joke all the time so maybe you can let him know too like you can just be quiet i i, I <laughs> did you have something to say? well i was gonna say you could be like oh it'd be really hot if you came in the room and you had tape on your mouth mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it'd be really hot it'd be really hot if we took that role play further and you just didn't talk more generally i also, was gonna when, say role play yeah. well yeah. i would this is what i've been thinking the whole time is like is Okay, so you're, he clearly, I can just, I know, I think about this so much that sex, we do it so often and for so long, but it's still uncomfortable enough that you can be with somebody for 10 years and still not be totally comfortable saying what you want. Oh, yeah. It's, 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 it's like this part of... So vulnerable. Yeah, it's such a vulnerable part of human being. No other, by the way, I always think about animals. No other animals. They're just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to fuck you. Now here I am fucking you. Yeah. They, no other animal feels shame about sex. But clearly, he's uncomfortable. I, and I only right. know that because of the like... Being horny. Horny and uncomfortable, yeah. um, which is a great combo. Uh, <laughs> but you should. Oh, but I, I only know that because of the the, the want to make of the sex. Like that to me screams <laughs> like guy that doesn't know how to be hot. He just mm. so he's doing what he does know how to do. Uh, so him coming up to you and and for mm. you saying don't be funny, it doesn't do anything for him because he doesn't know what to do. Oh, it, so he it's doesn't like, know how not to. So He just doesn't have the tools. Mm -hmm. Like going, up, It's like going up to somebody trying to fix your sink who doesn't know how to do plumbing and saying, don't do plumbing like that. He needs to learn how to do plumbing. And so I think you're going to have to have some uncomfortable conversations where you like everyone lays it on the line. Like it's not just an admonishment, do it better, because he doesn't know how to do it better. It's like, Maybe it's reading a book together. Maybe it's going, uh, you know, online together and Googling like like things to say, uh, seduction things. Maybe it's role play. Maybe it's like experimenting with this different stuff. It's going to be a bunch of uncomfortable conversations to get I, there. That's I disagree. I, I don't think you should talk about it. I think if you talk about sex too much, it becomes, this is my, yeah, my person, sure. personal opinion is like, I would rather you like tell him like come on to him and say I'm gonna sit on your face and like you know and shut up and like just become mm -hmm. like do something new that you don't do and like 
try to like get him there through you acting like that maybe, you know? And if he makes a joke, say no jokes. And if that doesn't work, maybe you need to sit him down and have a conversation. But I just mm-hmm. feel like that that's going to make... What do you think, Meg? I think that would embarrass a guy to talk too much about how he's not funny. I think, truly, I feel both of the things, that you could do both of the things. I would go in and be like, you know what? It'd be really hot if you did this. And then if at the end of the day he keeps doing jokes, I'd be like, honey, you got to stop doing those jokes. (laughs) Like, I'd be like, we need, can we talk about it now? Because I think you're right. People are so, it's really uncomfortable to talk about sex and what you want because if there's something about rejection or that you, oh, wait, I've been doing it wrong the whole time. Like, but I think to do it in a way where you kind of suggest things, then if it doesn't help, be like, you got to stop. Like, it's freaking me out. I have a question. How and In a nice you, way. And you don't have to answer this because it's a personal question. Uh, how yeah. sexually adventurous and, and open and, uh, you know, aggressive are you? Like, how much of... Do you guys have a mutually kind of like no one ever says what they want, but I just want you to know Mm -hmm. what I want and do it? Or are you like the really open kind of wild one and he's kind of uncomfortable? No, I think that might be part of the problem is I'm pretty reserved. And also like Mm. he's ready to go all the time, like classic high sex drive man. And I'm I'm a little just less like easily turned on. Like it just doesn't come quite as naturally to get in the mood. So I think I don't even think to like initiate very often. And so I think that's probably part, like you're telling me, like maybe I should like initiate the way I would want him to initiate. And it's just, it just doesn't come naturally to me. You have to do it. It doesn't come naturally to couch and then be like, Oh, we should have sex. Like it just doesn't. (laughs) Would you rather him like start like whatever way you would rather him do then maybe you do next time he does a joke, be like, you know what? Like, I'm not really in the mood, but I love you. And maybe next time this would be hot. Because this is what I'm observing. I think that's right. What I'm observing is like this kind of classic, um, in a weird way, it's classic, just like gender stuff is like, you don't initiate sex because you don't have to because he's literally like Mm -hmm. over there pointing at his dick going my wife you know like (laughs) so you're just like okay i'll never why would i have to do that he does that all the time but the way he does it you don't like and so you're getting served this platter of sexuality that isn't delicious to you and you're just like well this is the only way we eat around here and so, like, I, that's why I get back <laughs> this to is like, the only way we well, it's eat true. Them. That's why I get back to like, someone's gonna have, both of you are gonna have to do things that are a little bit uncomfortable <laughs> for you in order, because mm-hmm. I know, I almost, I don't know him, but I know m- men and the male brain. He wants you to be turned on. He just doesn't know how to do it. He's not aware that 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 there that what he's doing isn't isn't really truly isn't working for you. I have a suspicion that when you have had the conversation with him. It's not like a a full honest conversation. It's more like a, it's more like an uncomfortable like, oh, I don't really love the whole, you know. Can we make the sex, you know? Like it's not saying it takes me out of it. You don't have to make mm. it seem like it's not funny. You can just say that just takes me out of it. And he's like, oh, did you never like yeah, any of the times it. we've had sex? No, I like it. I just want to kind of like I want to explore deeper into another. You know, I want to I, I want to try new things. And you know, right. I, there's a way to say it that doesn't like embarrass the guy too. What if you had like a secret coat like? Okay, if you were doing role play, you'd be like, oh, like <laughs> if you were into like a massage role play, you could be like, do you need a massage? Like what if there was like a code where he'd say it to get you in- thinking about sex, but it wouldn't mm-hmm. turn you off because it wasn't a bore rat joke. Yeah. And, and massage is actually a brilliant suggestion because it's not speaking. It's a role That's play. Smart. Role plays yeah. a lot of pressure, mm-hmm. especially if you think you're funny. It's like, am I going to say the right, right thing? But like a massage is <laughs> just over, like. He's over there doing ass cat. He's doing like a herald. <laughs> <laughs> well, in long form improv. And you do think he's funny, obviously, or you wouldn't be with him. But the massage yeah. thing takes off pressure because then you could be like, I'm not really feeling massage right now. Or like, but it then it could also be a massage that's not sexual because you can have time for foreplay and be like, okay, am I into it? I got, I got, yeah. an, I got another. I love this massage thing because you're, 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 you guys are so right. Like, if you now you're probably going to be uncomfortable saying it, but if you said what I want 
is for you to give me a massage and turn it into us having sex. Like, you're right. He's not going to have to say anything uncomfortable because it's all physical. But maybe you wouldn't feel comfortable doing it. There are things you could do, like making a fishbowl full, full of sexual like desires that you have and writing it on a note and putting it in there so that you guys could once a week or once a month, whenever you're, you're in the mood or whatever, put, pull one out and he gets to read something mm. you want. You oh, could read something yeah. he wants and no one has to say out loud the thing that makes him uncomfortable. There are so many strategies out there. There's so many online. It'd be funny if his was jokes. <laughs> Like, I just want you to laugh at my poor head impression. Knock, knock, <laughs> and then turn up your laughter at him when you guys aren't having sex. Yeah. I mean, this whole thing where we're worried about like bruising this guy's ego, it's just like, I don't, it's immaterial. 10 years in, you guys are partners. And so, yeah. like, an uncomfortable conversation is, I, th- this is where I think Natasha and I differ, is okay because he wants, mm-hmm. I know, I don't know him, but I just know he wants you to be having, to leave a sexual encounter going, God, that was hot. Not like, yeah. well, I did that. I and let, he has I, said that. Yeah. Like, I, mm. I, I know that from his mouth that that's what he wants. He's just not good at getting there. I think, but there's so many resources for this. Like there's so much shit on the internet about like how to make sex hotter, how to make, how to do foreplay, how to this, how to that, like all these things that you could be, that you guys could be doing together. Natasha hates this kind of idea, but you guys could look it up together and that could be hot. You could look up, you know, ways to you could watch porn together, watch porn, whatever it is, whatever you're comfortable with. There's just so many things out there that would make, I think the journey of discovering what you both are into could be the thing that turns both of you on. Also, it does ebb and flow, right? Like some couples will go through things where like they're not feeling it as much and then they're having sex nonstop and like, that's why I think it is good to have difficult conversations because mm. yeah. then you at least know and then it could be, you know, like it's also easier saying like, oh, I'm not feeling a massage right now than to be like, I don't want sex with what, whatever the joke it was. The, me, Roger me, Mar- wife. Me, me, me wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's British Borat. <laughs> me wife. <laughs> me wife. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because, uh, you know, we're comedians and I i mean, I don't know about you, Meg, but like when Natasha and I have sex, it's not I've like, never had sex. It's not <laughs> you're a God girl. It's not a bit a minute. We're not doing comedy bits. Right. You know, it's like there's different compartments we're for crying. different things. Yeah, we mostly cry. <laughs> yeah, and we do it. And it's seven nights a week. And that's the other interesting thing. Uh, all right. Well, good luck. And it does seem like you guys have a healthy relationship. And yeah, don't just settle mm-hmm. for what he's serving up, I yeah. think, is the the idea where you have to push yourself yeah, because you have to also take a little bit of a leap too. He's not in charge of the sexuality in your relationship. You guys are partners in that. And so I think, yeah, yeah. All right. Bunny, bunny's feeling okay, horny well, for attention. So. Meg's dog has to go. So, yeah. uh, I'm so sorry about her. You're she's awesome. Been, we like her. She's good misbehaved. Luck. Okay. Good luck. Cool, thank you so much. You deserve to be seduced. Bye, hun. Yes. Bye. <laughs> I almost accidentally said I love you because you usually say I love you at the end of a call. You can say it with us if you want. Uh, oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I almost said like to her like love you, love you because you always say she love was you sweet. I she did love sweet. her. I liked her a lot. Yeah, you just have sometimes have to like coach and teach men especially. But do you you feel like having a conversation about sex makes you feel like oh now there's too much pressure? I don't know why I have that in my head that I, I think it kind of like ruins it or something. Yeah, I wonder why mm. Catholic school. <laughs> <laughs> or just like, well, I, you know what? I remember I, I came, I, I talked. It is uncomfortable. It is like nerve wracking because it's so you know vulnerable, what? but it's. I had yeah. a boyfriend who didn't want to have sex and I talked to him about oh. it and he got really mad. Okay. So, so that's traumatic. That's yeah. Yeah. I wonder where it comes from. No, that's literally, I would never want to talk about. <laughs> no, he, yeah. he was like, I don't want to talk about that. Like that's him, not you. You were mature and wanted to talk yeah. to him about it. You he probably dated something. gay men before. Oh, I, that was my type. <laughs> mm-hmm. I always, I, absolutely, I had a gay boyfriend in high school. We never kissed with our mouths open. Hilarious. So that's you what You would it, just smooch. You go, mwah, mwah, yeah. <laughs> And I was Did like. you think it was because he was Christian? <laughs> I knew he was gay, but like, I also thought like, oh, well, I think I was kind of like advanced because I was like, well, he likes me though. Uh-huh. He's gay, but then also like. Mm. <laughs> well, I'm so hot. <laughs> I'm, I'm turning him. <laughs> <laughs> in my old age makeup in our play that we did together. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, he like I guess he wants to eat pussy now. Uh, <laughs> I've always depended on the kindness of strangers. Well, Meg, you're so funny, and I know we can't promote anything, but I mean, we can oh, talk about actually, your I can promote Instagram. Something. <laughs> I can promote something. I got a new book coming. You out. guys are the funniest. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're the funniest. Thank you for existing. You're awesome. I think the strike's gonna end soon, and don't we're gonna say that on the thing. You're gonna say <laughs> you don't know anything. Oh, what do you mean? <laughs> 
Okay, well, listen. We announced the strike is ending today. The strike is over. <laughs> Meg, we love you. Check out her Instagram. I would love to know uh, mm. more about you, the secrets behind you. I feel like we have a little bit more of a window into your soul mm. now, and hopefully you've shared some of your light. Maybe you'll come back. Would you come back? Absolutely. Yeah. Are you doing any live dates? You got anything you want to plug? Um, you know, I do try to do a show. I love the Larco. I know oh. I have a show there. I try to do a show there once a month, and then I'm doing a show at Dynasty this month, but I can't remember. Oh, it's okay. Go to Dynasty Typewriters website mm-hmm. or Largo, Los Angeles. And I love Dynasty. Two great places in LA. Or see Meg when she comes. And to I put out a lot of videos. So thank you for promoting <laughs> the, Almost every my day, Instagram. I would say. <laughs> I say twice a day. I probably put out mm-hmm. content. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, email us if you have anything to say, and maybe you know of a church that we can all join. Oh, yeah. Give us some. I mean, I'm not joining a church. I'm Jewish, but. Our email is at EndlessHoneymoonPod at Gmail. Or if you have a secret, give us a call at 213-222-8608. And Meg, from Natasha and I, we love love you. you. Well, I love you guys too. And I love (laughs) Miss Blanche (laughs) and Miss Laura.